President of India. Please remain standing for the national anthem. ಶ್ಯಾಮಳಮ ವಂದೇ ಮಾತರ ಶುಭ್ರಜೋತ್ಸ್ನ ಫುಲಕಿತಿ ಫುಲ್ಲಕುಸುಮಿತ ಧ್ರುಮದಳ ಶೋಭಿ ಶುಭ್ರಜೋತ್ಸ್ನ ಪುಲಕಿತಿ ಪುಲ್ಲಕುಸುಮಿತ ಧ್ರುಮದಳ ಶೋಭಿ ಸುವಾಸಿ ಸುಮಧುರಭಾಷಿ ಸುಖದ ವರದ ಮಾತರ ವಂದೇ ಮಾತರ ವಂದೇ ಮಾತರ ವಂದೇ ಮಾತರ Rashtrapati ji, leaders of political India, members of the diplomatic corps, media colleagues, friends from various walks of life, the Hindu Center for Politics and Public Policy is a newborn venture associated with a 134-year-old newspaper. And it is an honor for us that the Honorable President of India has consented to inaugurate it. It would be strange if I were to extend a welcome to Sri Pranab Mukherjee at his official residence. But let me say a warm thank you, Rashtrapati ji, for having us here and consenting to do the inauguration in this magnificent setting. The Hindu, founded on September 20, 1878, is the oldest surviving major daily newspaper of Indian nationalism by which we mean the great socio-political movement that won freedom for India from colonial bondage and helped consolidate the gains of independence in every sphere of national life. We think that setting up a serious intellectual niche or division within Kasturi and Sons Limited, the company that publishes our newspapers, is an idea whose time has come. There's a great deal of superficiality and dilettantism, not just in mainstream Indian journalism, but also in public discourse on key issues that matter. Alongside this, we note a widespread disenchantment 
with policies and institutions which have clearly performed below par and let the people of India down. Recently published opinion polls testify to this mood of popular disenchantment. There are many things going for democratic India, above all, the abiding strengths of our ancient, living, historical civilization, our sound constitutional balances and safeguards, and the good sense, wisdom, and resilience of our people. But recent events remind us that we face tough challenges such as massive corruption and misgovernance, assaults on democratic values from within and without, and violation of women's rights, dignity, and lives. As costly are the grievous failures to address the inequalities and the mass and multiple deprivations that plague the lives of hundreds of millions of our people. The mission of the Hindu Center for Politics and Public Policy will be pro to provide intellectual ballast and substance to our and to the reading public's understanding of selected political, sub uh, pol political subjects, challenges, and issues. It's become a fashion in some quarters to decry politics, to depict it as nothing but a cynical game, to treat it at best as some kind of necessary evil. We firmly disagree with such perceptions and attitudes. We take democratic politics seriously, regard it as having much potential for good, notwithstanding its seamy side. We regard public policies, their orientation, content, and impact as vital to how a society fares. The core values the Hindu has been committed to over the long term will be the bedrock of the center's orientation and activities, truth-telling, freedom and independence, fairness and justice, secularism, respect for diversity and pluralism, humaneness, contributing consciously to the social good. We take these guiding principles seriously. They are not motherhood and apple pie sentiments, as Americans would say. We do not see the Hindu center as being in competition with our universities and other academic research centers. The political studies that we will fund, support, and bring to public life, public light will be focused, close to the ground, and of demonstrable public and policy interest. We envisage this research, as well as its publication and dissemination, to be fast-tracked, at least in comparison with what universities and other academic institutions are used to. The way the Justice J.S. Verma Committee went about its work and came up with what could be a game-changing contribution within the 30-day deadline it set for itself is an inspiration and a model for all of us. While the, you'll hear more about the Center's mission and proposed activities from other speakers, but I hope I've given you an idea of why we are assembled here. I warmly welcome everyone who has responded to our invitation and once again express our gratitude to the Honorable President of our Republic, himself a reservoir of knowledge on politics and public policy. So welcome. Honorable President, Mr. Sonia Gandhi, Mr. L.K. Advani, and other distinguished guests, friends, well-wishers, and people who have come from all over the country to express uh, solidarity with the idea of a Hindu center. I express my most sense of overwhelming gratitude and humble acknowledgement of a historic task that we should accomplish. It's also a singular honor that we are, it's been inaugurated here at Rashtrapati Bhavan, the ultimate symbol of this great republic. It augurs well for the center as an active instrument of public service. The context in which the idea of the center has emerged is a sharp sense of a breakdown of the basic consensus of governance and also a sense of an increasing polarization in the discourse to the, to the extent that um, legislative business is not allowed to proceed and the parliament is very often held hostage and reduced to a matter of just counting the votes. So we do want to, we do think we need to center to bridge this gap, a wide, widening, increasing gap in perception that's holding the whole country to ransom and causing great public anger. So we think the center should help strengthen the foundational liberal principles which have made this country great. The center ought to be a practical instrument of change 
rather than and solely engaging in theoretical explanations, especially when there's a lot of frustration and anger. We don't want to just add to you know, piles and piles of knowledge. We do want to make sure that all the streams of activity, three streams of activity, our um, research, our um, seminars and workshops, our lectures, and our roundtables where we hope to do some orbit for internal reconciliation, like you do track two for India and Pakistan. We hope to do that for, it's an ambitious task, but for Kashmir or for the Maoist um, problem or issue, as somebody would want to say, or even the Northeast. So the idea is that the center functions as a multifaceted body, not just a theoretical academic institution. We see our role also as taking forward a re-examination of fundamental constitution principles that have become so contentious, controversial. For instance, the definition of nationalism. I think Sri Advani saw the here, I mean, the whole struggle between composite nationalism and cultural nationalism, we do think that needs to be debated quite constructively and try to take definitions forward to, with a view to strengthening the liberal foundation of our republic. We also think that things like secularism, social justice, all these things would have to be re-examined with full earnestness, open-mindedness, but with a clear commitment to the original framework of, on which the Constitution was founded. On this very historic occasion, I take them on myself to pledge that the center will make every serious endeavor to help elevate the tenor of public discourse. We come from a tradition of constructive participation in national building and nation building. So I would like to dedicate this center to our eminent forefather, Katsuri Ranga Ayengar and Katsuri Srinivasan, whose impassioned commitment to public activism as they were the builders of the Hindu shall ever be our inspiration. We are very, very grateful to the distinguished leaders of politics, industry, and other spheres who have come here today to witness the center's launch. We very earnestly request your support and your help in taking this initiative forward and to make sure that we can really work together on the task of getting our country back on track. Thank you. <laughs>